This Child Month, we encourage you to get on board and be involved in the Child Protection and Family Service Agency's Child Protection Campaign. The initiative has three main components, anti-bullying, anti-corporate punishment, and child protection. With over 40 activities scheduled for May, be sure to participate in at least one event. For more information, visit childprotection.gov.jm. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Stay tuned. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, May 7. The island will continue to experience unstable weather conditions for the next three days. A trough across Jamaica has been generating widespread showers and thunderstorms since the weekend. The Met Service says isolated showers and thunderstorms will continue to affect the island as late as Thursday. In the meantime, motorists are urged to exercise caution as several roadways in Trelawney, St. James, St. Thomas, St. Catherine, and other areas were flooded earlier. These include the Bogwalk Gorge in St. Catherine, a section of the Sir Florizel Glasspole Boulevard near the Caribbean Cement Company in East Kingston, and Port Morant Square in St. Thomas. The National Works Agency is responding in areas where weather permits. Up to news time, the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, said no shelters had been opened. However, residents in low-lying and flood-prone areas are reminded to call their parish disaster coordinator or visit the ODPEM website to find out the location of their nearest shelter if the situation worsens in their area. In other news, government will be aggressively pursuing the development of Jamaica's bunkering industry. Transport and Mining Minister Robert Montague says this will be done by facilitating investment and ensuring that the necessary administrative and regulatory framework are in place. He points to a study commissioned by the Commonwealth Secretariat in 2012, which reported that Jamaica could generate up to 900 job opportunities and increased economic activity of approximately 3 billion U.S. dollars. This was contingent on the country growing its share of vessels passing through the Panama Canal and bunkering or refueling in Jamaica from the then 5% to 10%. We are therefore aggressively pursuing strategies to realize the projected growth levels. Ladies and gentlemen, in Jamaica, we are open for business. Minister Montague was addressing the gala dinner of the recent International Bunker Industry Association, IBIA, Caribbean Conference in Montego Bay. The conference was hosted jointly by the IBIA and the Maritime Authority of Jamaica. Government has opened a justice center in Port Maria, offering all non-court related justice services under one roof. It's the fifth such facility that has been established and the plan is to set up one in each parish. Services include restorative justice, mediation, and child diversion. Every parishioner must know there somewhere that if they need information about justice, they can attend and get information as to how to really access the courts, access a lawyer, access any justice or legal service. The minister says the center will also allow citizens to assist the police in its fight against crime and violence. This is not only where meetings will be held. This is where the GPs will be contacted from their par in the various communities. And in the various communities, they will set up meetings. And these meetings are not just to learn about justice programs, but to work with the police. Other justice centers have so far been established in St. Anne, Portland, Westmoreland, and Trelawney. 
The major organized crime and anti-corruption agency, MOCA, is now investigating a number of fake social media accounts claiming to belong to Prime Minister Andrew Holness. The Office of the Prime Minister says social media specialists detected the fake Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts which have been using photographs from the Prime Minister's official pages to scam the public. In addition to MOCA, the matter has been reported to Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. The OPM's press secretary, Naomi Francis, says the team is working with the authorities to identify all fake accounts and catch the scammers behind them. In the meantime, members of the public are urged to be careful and are reminded that no social media page associated with the Prime Minister solicits money. The Dispute Resolution Foundation, DRF, and the Citizen Security and Justice Program, CSJP3, are partnering to implement a community mediation project. The initiative will provide free sessions to persons in conflict. At least one mediation session will be held per month in each of the 50 communities served by CSJP3, which is funding the intervention. The project will be rolled out in three phases, and the first, which started in January, has included stakeholder sensitization sessions with officers of the courts, the police, representatives of the churches, and politicians. You have a formula that can help anyone who is in conflict to resolve their issues in a peaceful and amicable way. It promotes respect, it builds relationships, it repairs relationships. DRF's content and delivery leader, Paul Hines, was speaking at a JIS think tank last Friday. He says the Dispute Resolution Foundation is in discussion with churches and other institutions to identify suitable venues for all the sessions. Other phases of the project will include the training of additional resource persons and a media campaign launch. The National Works Agency, NWA, has started a major road rehabilitation program in Mount Salem, St. James. The NWA's Community Relations Officer for the Western Region, Janelle Ricketts, says $22 million will be spent on the road works. It targets Crawford Street, Piggott Street, and Peddler's Lane in the St. James community, which was the first to be declared a zone of special operations. The NWA will be resurfacing the targeted roadways and carrying out drainage improvement. This augments earlier efforts to repair sections of the Barnett View and Mount Salem roadways. The projects are financed through the Capital A Flood Damage Program. And finally, the National Works Agency and the Tourism Enhancement Fund, TEF, have joined forces to replace 40 LED lights along the Elegant Corridor in St. James. NWA's Western Region Community Relations Officer, Janelle Ricketts, says this brings to 62 the number of lights which have been replaced along the Elegant Corridor since November 2017. She says it was done to improve visibility along the corridor as several lights have been damaged due to motor vehicle crashes. In addition to installing poles and LED lamps, the project involved repairs to the lights' foundations. The TEF provided $17 million to finance the work. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Boiling and treating your water with bleach are two of the best ways to purify water. If you choose the boiling method, allow the water to boil for five minutes, cover and let it cool. Store boiled water in a clean airtight container and use something with a handle to take out the water when needed. If you use bleach to make your water safe for drinking, use two drops of bleach to a liter of water, eight drops for a gallon and half teaspoon of bleach for five gallons of water. Shake well and leave for half an hour before use. Water is essential to a healthy life, so ensure yours is clean and safe for consumption. Every month of the year, there has been in our history some incidents of flooding that has taken place in some aspect of the country. And that is something that we have to take note of. Apart from monitoring and giving the forecast, we are also responsible for warnings. And so there are some warnings that we want you to take special heed to if you consider yourself to be vulnerable in any situation. When we speak about a flash flood watch, it means that there is a feature 
some kind of weather system that is going to produce enough rainfall that makes it possible for you to get flooding. So it means start to watch because the water levels are going to be increasing and there is the possibility of the flooding. Now, if we start to see that in some area, flooding has started to occur, or if we believe that the flooding has been so close to an area that it is going to happen in that area in a short space of time, we will escalate that flash flood watch and refer to it as a flash flood warning. So when we talk about a flash flood warning, it means not only that the flooding is possible, but the flooding either has already started to happen or is going to happen in a very short space of time because it is very close to that area. So it is important to know what the watch means as opposed to what the warning means. Usually with the warning, we will not only issue a warning, but we will also tell you what kind of actions are important or what you should not do, like do not go through flooded waterways because it could pose a risk to your life and to your property. Also, if you live in low-lying or flood-prone areas, if it is an area that is regularly experiencing flooding, a flash flood warning for your area would mean that now is the time to move to higher ground because the flooding has already started or is going to happen very shortly. It is also important for us to know where we live because sometimes in our messages, we might not refer to the actual town but we will tell you what part of the country the flood watch or the flood warning is relevant to. So if we talk about central parishes, we are referring to Clarendon. We are also talking about Manchester. We are also talking about St. Anne. These are central parishes. So you have to be knowledgeable of where you live so that you know whether the message actually applies to you. The messages that we issue for hurricanes and tropical storms are watches and warnings as well, like the flooding. But in this case, for a tropical storm or a hurricane, when we issue a watch, it means the conditions that are associated with the storm or the hurricane are possible within a certain time frame. If you hear tropical storm or hurricane watch, you could get the impact of that system within a day and a half, 36 hours. If we mention that it is a tropical storm or a hurricane warning, it means that you only have one day before that thing can affect you. So we are moving to how quickly you need to make sure that you are prepared by naming it a watch or a warning. So the watch is the first level of the alert that there is something that is likely to affect you. But when we move to a warning, it means now is the time to batten down because you most likely are going to experience that storm or hurricane. We might have a tropical wave, which is the least of, the, of, of them, in that it can still cause a lot of rain and it can still cause flooding and devastation, but it will not have very strong winds associated with it. But then there is the tropical depression that is a little stronger because now you have winds that are moving with it, gusty winds, and it also has a lot of rainfall. Then you have tropical storms, which is a more severe kind of tropical depression because the winds are even stronger. And then if it gets even stronger, it could become a hurricane. Catch up on the latest news stories coming out of the office of the Prime Minister this past week. People want law, but more than anything else, they want order in their communities. The unemployment rate has fallen from 13.7% in April 2016 to 9.6% as at January 2018. The two areas of focus this year under the theme Ramp It Up, Fix It Up are health, with specific attention to health centers, and education, 
with specific attention to installing ramps in schools. You're watching Jamaica House Weekly. I'm Lorraine Mendez. At the top of the week, Prime Minister Andrew Holness launched a pilot program to provide over 5,000 energy-efficient solar lamps to energy-poor households. The initiative, worth 4,000 U.S. dollars, is a direct response to house fires in which 31 persons perished, nine of them children, over the past six months. Under the project, over a thousand households across seven constituencies in the Kingston metropolitan area will be provided with at least three bulbs per home. This program is not the entirety of the government's response. This is the start. This is going to be a pilot. And so we have selected seven constituencies within the urban area where we would be better able to quickly identify households that are in need and provide the necessary support services, not just the solar lamps, but the ecosystem to make the solar lamps usable. The pilot is being managed by the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica. At Monday's launch, Prime Minister Holness announced that an energy core of the HOPE program would be created to distribute and educate persons on the use of the lanterns. On Tuesday, the Prime Minister launched activities for Workers' Week and Labor Day 2018. Workers' Week 2018 is being observed under the theme Preserving Our Legacy, Unfolding Progress, while Labor Day celebrations will focus on Ramp It Up, Fix It Up. Mr. Holness said education and health were the dual focus of Labor Day activities this year. 130 schools will be targeted for the installation of ramps and rails to increase access to the physically challenged. A similar exercise will be carried out at health centers across the island. During this Workers' Week and Labor Day period, I urge you to carry forward the spirit of volunteerism and service. During the launch of Workers' Week, Prime Minister Holness announced that the unemployment rate was at 9.6%, the lowest in over a decade. He said youth unemployment also experienced a steep decline. It is the goal of this government that no one is left behind and that there is equal opportunity for every Jamaican to self-actualize. By Tuesday afternoon, the Prime Minister was in Gordon House piloting a resolution to extend the state of emergency in St. James. Mr. Holness argued that the security measure has yielded significant results in the parish. He said there were 62 less murders between January 1 and April 30, 2018 over the corresponding period last year. In addition, Prime Minister Holness said the security forces were able to put a stop to the activities of eight major violence producers in the parish. And information was also gathered on gangs, wanted persons and facilitators of crime. When you speak to the citizens in Montego Bay and wider St. James, that is what they are saying. They are happy for the reduction in murders, yes, but they are also saying there is greater order in the parish. The House granted the extension until August 2. Ahead of the parliamentary sitting, Prime Minister Holness brought his crime-fighting plan to the East Central St. James Education Fund charity dinner. The April 28 function was put on by Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett. At the end of the use of these extraordinary powers, we would have eroded the three main threats to the stability of the St. James economy. Guns, gangs, and dons. And on the weekend, Prime Minister Andrew Holness reiterated government's resolve to decisively deal with the crime situation. He was reacting to news of the security forces recovering four M16 assault rifles, 150 bullets, and marked ballistic vests at Ramble Hill in Bogue, St. James. A .38 revolver, two 9mm pistols, and a Mac-10 were also found in the area. Back at Jamaica House, the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency was called in to investigate a number of fake social media accounts bearing the Prime Minister's name and image. The fake Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts seek to scam persons of money and other valuables. While urging persons to be careful, the OPM issued the Prime Minister's official accounts on the social media sites. Also at Jamaica House, the Prime Minister met with several prominent movers and shakers. On Wednesday, Mr. Holness met with the island's High Commissioner-designate to South Africa, Angela Comfort. 
Wednesday also saw the Prime Minister meeting with a delegation from the private sector organization of Jamaica. The following day, Prime Minister Holness held talks with a group of the island's plastic manufacturers. And that's it for Jamaica House Weekly. Be sure to join us next time for more of the news coming out of the office of the Prime Minister. Wet hands with water. Apply enough soap to cover all hand surfaces. Rub hands palm to palm. Right palm over left dorsum with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Backs of fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Rotational rubbing of left thumb clasped in right palm and vice versa. Rotational rubbing backwards and forwards with clasped fingers of right hand in left palm and vice versa. Rinse hands with water. Dry hands thoroughly with a single-use towel. Use towel to turn off faucet. Your hands are now safe. Men and women. Equality. A message from the Bureau of Gender Affairs and Dispute Resolution Foundation, paid for by the UN Women Fund for Gender Equality. The state is catering to the holistic development of our nation's youth. Not only is it ensuring that every child has access to education, government is also ensuring that our children are healthy. Take a look at one such initiative. <music> As the CEO of the National Parenting Support Commission, I want to speak specifically to parents to affirm your children. A, acknowledge. In other words, recognize your child's importance. F, friend. Understand that there must be mutual affection, that bonding is absolutely important. It must be encouraged. F, favor. Your children desire your approval and your support. When they meet your expectations, do not just ignore them, but support and encourage them. I, influence. In a time when some of our influences could be called into question, we need to ensure that as parents, we become the most important influence in the lives of our children. We want parents to get involved in the lives of their children. We want them to lead by example, and we want you to encourage your children's dreams and aspirations. Our respect. Respect is something that we must teach our children. As adults, I want to caution though, that is also something we must earn. We must not only expect respect to be reciprocated because we're adults, we must show it. We must model for our children what it means to respect. Motivate, be your child's cheerleader. 
speak positively over his or her life. As a parent, learn to celebrate effort, especially when they're in school and not just grades. That's very important. When your child is doing his or her best and putting out effort, encourage it and support him or her. Occurring in Jamaica, we're ever ready to assist you before, during, and after a disaster. But everybody have a role to play, so make we work together and follow the plan. Whether rich or poor or where you come from, hurricanes affect everyone. So be prepared. Prevention is better than cure. Be prepared. Listen to Adbem. A message from the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management. Be careful what you teach your little children. Make sure I know something to hurt them. Mind what you say to my sister. She could be the next prime minister. Children in Jamaica constitute anyone who is under the age of 18 years. And so once you have a child who is under your care and supervision, we encourage you at the Office of the Children's Advocate to always know where your children are. It doesn't mean that you have to be there with them, but you certainly know who they're with, where they're going, and the purpose for being there. This is a key component in helping to establish some rules in terms of some ground rules and helping to guide your children towards responsible and sensible choices and also assisting you if something were to go wrong to know what is the first point of contact to assist your child. While you're not to look at everybody as a potential suspect, that you need to be very wary of adults, whether they're in positions of authority or not, that seek to want to have a very close relationship with your child. Somebody who wants to invite your child on an outing and it's just that adult and your child alone. Somebody who wants to take your child to a very special event to reward the child perhaps for some performance that the child would have done in an extracurricular activity or for academic uh, excellence. We encourage you to look at these situations very carefully and to determine whether or not it's an appropriate meeting or outing that this person is propositioning for your child. If you're enrolling your child in a daycare, ensure that you know something about the track record of that daycare. Ensure that the daycare has what we call an open door policy which allows you to go in, see what's happening, observe how the workers there interact with the children, and know some of the ground rules that guide these interactions. If they're going on outings, whether it be school trips or otherwise, ensure that at some point, even, even if you can't go to all, you do attend some of them. So you get yourself integrated into the system and the culture of the school. For these tips and of course any other information that deals with children, that is anyone under 18 years, please feel free to contact the Office of the Children's Advocate. We're at 72 Harbour Street, downtown Kingston, and our numbers are 948-1134 or website www.oca.gov.jm. Watch what you teach your little children. Make sure I know something to hurt them. I want you saying to my sister, cause she could be the next prime minister. And that's our show. Be sure to join us again tomorrow right here on this station for more of the positive happenings in Jamaica land we love. We are available at your leisure on the internet. Visit jis.gov.jm. Do join us on social media and check out our YouTube channel. You may also contact us via email or download our mobile app that's iOS and Android compatible. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you for watching.
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.